The following program contains adult language, poor taste in jokes, racial slurs, political slurs, slants, and all sorts of things that if you are sensitive and have a delicate constitution, you should probably go watch Teletubbies. You were warned. Hey kids, welcome back to Roto Talk. Alright kids, we're gonna do it today, so pay attention. Give heed you, you vermin. Here's news to your advantage. This is the probably second to last video in this build. That's not counting paint and uh, yeah, we'll probably do setup videos, but I still have a frozen lake out there, so that ain't happening anytime soon. Uh, and I also need to paint it, but as far as the physical building of the boat, there's going to be this radio box, and then we're going to do uh, probably the cooling line. It's just going to take about 35 seconds. Maybe fire it up just so people can see it run. So, radio box. I make these. I already said this once before. See the little JJ Roto Geek? Uh, I, I design these. I 3D print them. And let's see. Where's my battery? And I told you guys earlier that I kind of build these to my specs, like the servos I use, the batteries I use, the receivers I use. So I'd be happy to share the file with anybody that wants it, um, but you'd have to modify the hell out of it probably. So I use these Tenergy 2000 milliamp six volt nickel metal hydride batteries for my boats, all I use for my radio packs, okay? This is not a LiPo battery, it's a just, you know, it says six volts, but it actually comes out like seven works great you don't really have to use a high voltage servo with it but it really gives you a lot of strength in your servos so one thing i never liked with any radio box that i've ever seen was the fact that how do you keep the battery in there because if you look at normal radio boxes and i'm not going to dig any out but if you look at a, a normal radio box yeah there's a place for a servo or whatever but you got to be clever with your own battery placements so do you use velcro well i'll tell you if you flip as hard as i do wreck boats as hard as I do, whatever, Velcro ain't going to save your butt. So here's what I did with mine. Here's your battery. Here's where the battery goes. Slides in. Okay, like that at an angle. Then when you put the lid on, the lid has this tapered block in it. Okay, the antenna hole always goes towards the front of the boat, so you can't really do this wrong. And when you put this, I don't know if you guys can see it, but when you put the lid on, that angle block locks the battery in. It can't slide out. So as soon as you put your hatch tape on, see? But, lid lock. Very cool. So, the other thing I did uh, that I like is radio boxes obviously you're supposed to keep your radio gear uh reasonably dry well like i said the other day uh anybody who says something's waterproof is usually lying now radio boxes on a normal run yes you normally keeps you completely dry but if you have a boat that goes ass end up okay like a cracker box open cavity boat you get a ton of water into it so you flip it it fills up with water and the flotation's all in the nose so now it's floating like this okay that whole radio box is underwater. Chances are good by the time you get your ass out there and you get the boat in your rowboat or whatever you're doing for a rescue, um, chances are good you got a little bit of water in there. Hopefully not a lot. Now these that I made work really, really well. Um, they do not leak at all that I've noticed so far. They have been underwater, seem to be pretty good the way I do it. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but let's just assume that you get 15 drops of water in your radio box. It's not the end of the world. You can run all day on that. It's, it's not going to hurt anything because your, your servos are waterproof. Your receiver is going to be waterproof. I'll show you that in a minute. It's going to be a long video, by the way, <clears throat> and all that good stuff. Uh, but the problem is when you go to store your boat, the problem is that's going to, like, especially in the summertime, it's going to evaporate and it's going to cause condensation and it's going to get connections rusty or whatever. So instead of having to untape your whole radio box or uh, a lot of radio boxes have bolts, I'll show you my drag cap. I get these from Joe at Zip Kits. 
these uh, it's a little dusty, sorry, but that is a radio box from Zip Kits. It's a TFL Hobby, one of the ones he has. And they have thumb screws. Well, those that's great, but it takes forever to get them off. So, eh, you don't know, like that either. So what I did, you always want to dry out your radio box when you're done running because there will be a little bit of water in it sometimes. So what I do is this hole serves two purposes. If you look at this, it's a very flush lid. Okay, and it snaps in. Okay. So you see, I'm not cheating. Okay. Um, so one, it's kind of nice sticker, but there's an antenna here. You can stick, pull it up. I just, after I tape my lid on with hatch tape, um, I put a piece of tape over this hole. All this hole is, is an air vent. Now you could 3D print yourself a little plug. I've done that before. It says JJ on it, or your initials or whatever you want. Um, I don't, but just put a piece of uh, tape over this. And when you're done running for the day, you peel that tape back. Now, if you can see water in there, hold your boat upside down. And that's why I made, it's really hard to see on camera. See these rings? This is actually a cone shape that I designed into the 3D print. So the water will run down to the hole and drain out, ish, if there's a lot in there. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I just peel that thing back. And the next time I go to run, if I don't need to charge my battery, if you need to charge your battery, yeah, you'll take the tape off the whole thing. Um, but then I just put a piece of tape back over it and that's just what I like, you know, it's, this, this is, you can't buy these anywhere. This is a Jasonified freak of nature. Um, then we've got the receiver box holder, which I did originally design to be watertight, but I don't, I just stick it in there. I got little holes just to help with wire management and the receiver just after we waterproof it with a balloon, it's going to fit in there. And then our servos. These are the servos out of the old Nintendo. They are just going to go into here like this. Look how nice they fit. And these are solid. These servo mounts are printed in the box. This whole box is printed with no uh, supports, by the way, for you 3D print guys. So it's pretty nice in that regard. And then my rudder is going to fit. See how close everything fits? Very, very, very tight, which is good. Okay, actually this is in backwards. Sorry. Anyway, you get the idea. Then these little lids go on that lock them in. Shove some screws through there. Bada bang. That servo ain't falling out. It's beautiful. And we do have a little lid for the radio box as well. Um, you can you can waterproof this little cavity if you want to. I don't. But whatever. Whatever blows your skirt up. And then ha, fits too good. Then we use our, we also have our uh, switch. I use these switches. I do not use RC boat switches that you buy off of hobby shop store sites and they have a little plastic slidey switch. I have had nothing but trouble with those things. Ah! Ah! After, if you don't spray them with electrical contact cleaner after you run nine times out of 10, they corrode they crap out so i buy these off amazon these are waterproof marine switches and they're lit if you want to wire up the little light so the power light comes on go for it we might do that in this one just make it pretty um but these are literally waterproof i've sunk them underwater and they still work period the ones you buy from hobby shops that i've seen are not waterproof at all okay um, and you get that little bit of moisture in that radio box and you forget about it for a week. You come back, that switch gets corroded. Then all of a sudden you're running, you hit a wave and this happened to me. It bounces off and all of a sudden you run and you crash. Bad, bad day at the zoo. So I use these. They work great. I love them. So I buy them off Amazon. They're like, I think they come out to two bucks a piece and they have uh, they're waterproof. Obviously they have a light push on, push off. And a little nutty on the back. It's very, very, very cool. So, real quick, um, what we're going to do first is we're going to put in our boots. Now, <clears throat> these are the boots I use. Again, this is not necessarily the way most people set up the radio boxes. This is the way I set up my radio boxes, okay? So, I take two boots. The first thing I do, let me grab a couple pieces of gear here. Hang on. Okay. So, I grab some gear. So the first thing that I do with these boots, now these boots, I am not going to boot the rudder that comes off the transom, because remember when we did the build video, I said you're only really saving water from creeping in when the boat flips, 
stalls. And even then, it's it's pretty much above the water line. It's not going to sink your boat in most cases. So, in this particular build, <clears throat> so I'm only going to use two boots on this build. I'm going to use one for my throttle cable. I do use a throttle cable. I do not use throttle linkage. I will show you that. And then I use one for the steering. Now, <clears throat> you can see the hole I've made. I 3D print these holes in, but I do kind of hone them with a bit when I'm done, just so there's no little pieces of gotcha in there. And uh, that's how I do these. So, what we're going to do, first thing I do is I take some alcohol. What can I do for you, Jim? I said give me the brandy! Not the good kind, but... Uh, denatured alcohol or rubbing alcohol whatever you got any kind of cleaner brakes cleaner works whatever because when you get these boots from pretty much any source they have a powder on them from the uh, injection process and when you go to glue these in it might not grip the second thing I do is I take a well where where are where is it 8,000 freaking things in this all right, I can't find my Q-tips. I got a big wad of frigging Q-tips out here. Do you think I can find them? No. Okay, I'm going to take a popsicle stick. Whatever. Doesn't have to be fancy. So, something that will fit in here. Like that. Then I use, believe it or not, anti-seize. For aluminum, you do not have to use anti-seize. Vaseline works. Uh, use some shaft grease. Trust me, this will save you such headaches down the road. This little tip... Uh, you could use Crisco out of your old lady's kitchen or your old man's, depending on who's wearing the pants in the family. Um, and take a little bit of grease and just, uh, this is so much easier with a Q-tip, but I'm far too lazy to trek in the house. Okay, that's it. Nothing, nothing fancy. I'm going to put some in there. I'm going to wipe it off. You, if you're sloppy like that, <laughs> you might have to um, clean it off again. Okay. You don't need a ton in there, guys. You don't need to pack this thing. You don't need to take a grease gun and slam a shit in there. All right? I know this seems silly, but I'm going to tell you why I do this. This comes from many, many years of being frustrated and then finally getting the my head out of my ass. Kind of. Now, smush it around in there. That's all you got to do. I'm going to probably re-clean these. All you got to do, take a Q-tip with some grease, whatever you're using, stick the Q-tip in there, you know, roll it in the grease, stick it in there, and then roll it around inside of the tube uh, in the bellows here. Trust me, much, much easier than this half-ass way I'm doing it, but I just wanted to show you guys. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to spray these down again. It might still have silver on it, but it should be okay. Yep, still has silver. That stains. Interesting. Okay, so then what I do... What that does, the grease putting those in there, puts in a, it keeps it from cracking down the road. It keeps it from cracking, and it also uh, allows everything to move nice and smooth. Because what happens is if your bellows or your boot is dry, and you move your rudder shaft all the way out, it'll stretch your bellows and it'll bring it back. And sometimes it'll pull it inside out, or it'll pull it so tight it'll break. And it will break eventually. This keeps that from happening. Now, I'm probably going to regret not using real grease on these. but So this one is for my throttle. And I'm going to show you how to set all this stuff up. Like I said, this might be this might even be a two-part video because this does a lot of little tricks. So I pull it down until that collar just does that. Okay? And then we do the same thing with the rudder output and believe it or not if you've got a radio box that's big enough or you have enough room you can flip these around and you can have it doesn't really matter which end you have out but I always do it this way okay now because of what I said about you know if it overstretches you'll pull that out so what I do is I take CA glue now remember that trick I showed you in the chemicals video I think it was my little needle bottle is clogged up. Hold lighter over the needle. This is super glue, CA glue medium. Hold it over that and squeeze down. There. Because these tips will get clogged. Then I'm just going to, hopefully you can see this, put a little bit, it doesn't have to be a ton. You don't have to make it perfectly all the way around. 
just like that. Done. Now, this also helps from getting clogged when you're done using your glue for the day. Just do that, and then five days from now, it still will not be clogged up. Just a tip. Magic trick. Okay, so now what we can do to speed this up, those are just to tack, tack weld those in. That's just activator, okay? You don't have to use activator at all. Now, our switch, same principle. Now, I will do the wiring on the switch later, but with my switch, what I'm going to do, slide it in this hole. If you guys want a video on the actual RC switches and the little mechanism that they sell for them, I will gladly show you that. Um, I'll just do one as a demo because I do not use those at all. I don't have one boat with those in. Um, let me grab some thread lock. Okay. So I make sure my little positive or my switch symbol is upright the way I want it. Put a little bit of thread lock on there. Just a little bit. These are super fine threads. And I'm going to, because I hate it when switch like on guitars, volume knobs and tone knobs and things like that. I hate it when they rattle loose. It drives me nuts. Um, and if you can get a socket in here, more power to you. You probably can on a real radio box. Mine are, I designed these radio boxes to be exceptionally tight. Like there is hardly any wiggle room for anything else. So getting a socket in there is kind of a nightmare. But you don't need much tension on this. And once that, um, once that Loctite freezes up, the thing I like about these two is it cost me to make this radio box, I don't know, three bucks, maybe. I mean, just this plastic. I don't have to wait to get it ordered. I print it in seven hours, maybe. Um, I 3D print it, it cost me a couple bucks, I'm done. I print five of them, throw them on the shelf, and I designed it to work for just about every single boat style there is. Cracker, I have to modify just a touch. You know, there's some little things you have to modify, but not too bad. Okay, that's that. So these, your bellows, are in there nice and tight. Everything's good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this fancy-dancy little thing. Okay, this, you can see it's got corrosion on it. This I do not like. Um, I usually do put uh, some form of grease on here too, but it's been wiped clean. Need to do it again. These I get from zip kits. You might be able to get them from somewhere else. I don't know. Um, but this is a direct drive throttle cable. Okay, so what this does is if you guys at home have a gas boat and you look at it, chances are really good you have a throttle linkage. That throttle linkage goes as a hard throttle linkage to this, uh, a little pivot point on the engine bracket. And then there's what's called a bell crank that kind of twists this way and it transfers leverage this way. I hate them. I hate them. I haven't used them in years. When I discovered these from Joe at Zip Kits, like I said, maybe other people have them. I don't know. Um, direct drive. So if you need to get your throttle linkage around a funky spot like that, this works. You can buy them in, I think, 12 or 18 inches. I always get the 18. It's like a buck more uh, because I buy a few of them at a time. And that way, if I need to put it in some long ass boat, I just cut it down. If I put it in a short drag cat, I cut it down. It's all good. So, and then it comes with this. Now, the next build video we do, or if you guys want to see how to set one of these up from scratch, it's not rocket science, right? You have a set screw here. This throttle cable goes in there. It comes with this horn, okay? And then you put a, a servo wheel on your servo. You screw the wheel to the servo wheel, centered, and then that set screw locks into this cable. Then this goes directly to your carburetor butterfly rod and that's it now the only thing that's tricky about these is setting them up setting them up can be a little squealish hang on a minute if you don't know what you're doing setting them up but if somebody shows you it's like oh that makes sense okay and what we'll, we will do that in this end you've got a bigger hole that goes around the carburetor rod okay and you'll see that what i'm talking about and the other end just goes in to here that's set screw so what we do is I usually trim the throttle one. I trim the boot back just a little bit. Just that way, I ain't got to fight it. I don't trim it all the way off because you'll end up with a big gaping asshole there. You don't want that. Then we're just going to slide this through. Now, taking off the other ends easier because then I can just slide it through that way, which I think we'll do. So, take a Allen. 
simple. Now what I'm going to do, just to give it a little bit of help, I'm going to put a little bit of this nasty ass boat trailer bearing grease on. Don't use this shit on your boat shaft. That crap, shit. You can stick your kids to a window like a Garfield stuffed animal in a car, man. It's this stuff. Thick. You don't want to do that. Okay. So now I'm going to slide this through. This side is easier. You just feel around with your fingers a little bit. Boom, there she goes. Popped out. Done. Easy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock it into the servo. Hopefully you guys can see this. I will zoom in. Okay. I don't recommend um, thread locking these. <laughs> because you will adjust this a lot or have to whatever and thread lock and sets tiny tiny set screws don't play well together usually so now we're going to pull this through and this this goes nice and smooth just like that okay then I'm going to take one of my caps slap it on I use these funky all purpose screws that are pretty long When I print these, I print them undersized, the holes. Don't go fast, let the heat melt the plastic a little bit. Jesus Christ with a cracker couldn't get that servo out. Trust me on that. And that's it, those, those screws actually go almost all the way down to there. These servos don't pop out and it will not break, okay? Never say never, but you know, okay. Look at that. Now, just so I don't lose it, I'm going to put the end back on here. I'm not going to set anything, obviously. So, now, you may have noticed when I put the servo in, I did not care one way or another if it was centered. I didn't care if that set screw was straight up so I could access it. Nothing. Okay? Reason being, I never adjust it from the servo. I always adjust it from the engine side. You'll see why. <clears throat> now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do our illustrious... Um, steering servo. Now what we're going to do is we're going to center this. Remember from the other video our funky little our funky little servo tester that I really don't love this model but it works. Okay and then I'm going to that is centered. Okay 1500 that's centered. So Okay. That's center. So um, if that is not far off enough, that arm, to justify taking it off and moving it a tooth because then it's just going to be that way. Not worth doing. Okay. Now, as for the servo end of things, nine times out of ten, and I don't know why I did this one this way. This is off the old cracker, mind you. And these are new servos, relatively new. Um, usually this bit is on the rudder, and all this is is a screw clamp this screw clamps your 440 rod in and this just threads into the servo um, it doesn't really matter if you've got the room in your boat it doesn't matter which end goes where because on the rudder side on this particular machine I put one of these on which is a ball link okay uh, again, you can get these from Joe or OSE or wherever you're at. And so it's got a little ball in it that rotates. You guys have probably seen these on radio control cars. Your 440 threaded rod screws into this. All right. It's much easier to put this on the servo and put this on the rudder. <laughs> but I'm not changing it because I'm lazy. So it doesn't matter in this case. So what we're going to do, that is give or take center. All right. And I'm going to put this servo right in there. So our, this, I thought I had, yeah, this one here. Found this in the magic drawer. Might not be long enough. I might have to use a new piece of rod. This is 440 threaded, well, 440 push rod with threads on the end. And you can see how it goes into this plastic um, ball screw. Jeez, whatever you want to call it. Is the hangman dead then? Out with it then, Jack Nasty Face. Is it that your mother's turning into an honest woman? Swivel. Um, this might not be long enough. We may have to actually put in a new one. But that's going to be that. 
um, it is much easier to fix it and go the opposite. Matter of fact, I'm being a lazy ass. I'll do that real quick. So let's take this out. I mean, it takes two seconds. I mean, it's kind of, we're going to save this for the rudder. And I'm just going to take this, and I want this out for now. Here's a trick I do. On the non-threaded end, put your drill. Grab a hold of this. Hell of a lot faster than spinning it by hand. All right. Then you can take this. My servo's going in like meh. And let's see. Where is this going to end up? So you want to see path of least resistance. That's going to line up really nice. Not a huge shock there because... I kind of designed them, so I know where they're going. Will this screw fit? Of course it won't. That might have been why I did this. All right. Now, a couple options. You can force it. <laughs> I've got zillions of these little servo heads. Or you could retap it if you're going to be real anal about it. But, um, yeah. Doesn't really matter. Or you can put a smaller size screw in there. And you can... Uh, just put a nut on the other end if you want to. So let me just get this fitted up. I'll be right back. Bang. Okay, so we've got this threaded in. It needed a little bit of persuasion, but it got in there. Don't let the, don't sweat the little shit. Don't let something that little stop you or hold you up for a day. Drill the sucker out and just slab the screw through there and put a nut on the back. This whole point, the whole point of this, the screw doesn't even move. It's this swivel. Okay, so whatever. So what we're gonna do now, you can. I'm going to see if I can dig up a, a new piece of 440 rod that I know is long enough, and that way I'm just going to assemble this all in one shot. Hang on. Oakley doakley, there's a nice long piece of 440. Now, and that is what it's called, 440 push rod. Yeah, you're pushing. Yeah, you're pushing. Yeah, you're pushing. Now, just a note, you might be tempted to use these, which are spring clasps, these are the solder kind that we put on cables for outboards for turning the engine. You might have a drawer full of these things from 1922 or something. Don't use this on a gas boat no. unless it's on your throttle or something. Ain't strong enough for steering. I, I'd be shocked if it didn't pop off. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to take this threaded rod. Same trick because I don't adjust these through that plastic piece like you might be tempted to. We, we adjust them from the rudder side. And I'm just gonna give it a lot of threads. Now this is obviously way too long, that's okay. So now I'm gonna slide this through. We centered our servo. We're gonna slide this dude through our boot. We already greased it. See how easy that is? Now, this is kind of a bullshit video in, in a couple of ways. The reason I say that <clears throat> is because if you're using a radio box that's not mine, <laughs> you have to drill all this stuff out. You have to figure out how to make all this stuff. Um, like servo brackets. Your radio box may or may not have them. You might have to make them or buy them separately. The holes in the boxes, you have to drill because radio boxes are kind of universal. They don't come pre-drilled. Um, yeah, so it, it's just kind of misleading in a way. It's not misleading. I mean, this is how you do mine. I guess that's not misleading. Um, but helps if you grease these a little bit. Um, but again, this is not the, you know, setting up a, a real radio box that you buy off Joe or anywhere uh, is more in depth. It takes longer than this because you have to set up how the drip, the servos are mounted in and, and whatnot. Uh, if I run across a radio box that's blank, you know, like maybe I find one in my magic drawer or something, I'll do a video on how to do one from scratch. But, I mean, most of you guys, if you're building a gas boat or gals, if you're building a gas boat, you probably know how to drill a friggin' hole in the box. So I'm not... You know, worried about it. And if you are setting up a radio box and you can come across this video, I've set up zillions of radio boxes, so just shoot me a question and I'll try to answer it best I can. Okay, there we go. Bada bing. That's done. All right. Next thing we're going to do is the receiver. Now, the receiver, I'm going to do kind of in a funky way. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take 
steering is always channel one. Okay, so I'm gonna slide in my case my steering cable in, and I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in here, and I'm gonna put that in channel one of my radio link receiver. I already have the fail safe set up for this, but that's irrelevant in this. We'll walk over that later, some other video. And then I'm going to put in my throttle, which is going to be channel two. Okay. It's really not important if you can see this or not, because I'm just snaking cables. And you can put that anyway. Anyway, anywhere. These I designed this so these will slide down into this. Just keep things nice and neat. You don't have all sorts of shit laying around. All right. Okay. Then plug that one into channel two. Then I plug my battery into whatever the hell channel I want. It does not matter. So I'm just plugging in leads. Okay. Because I'm going to wire my switch, and that's probably going to be in a different video. Or I might not even show you. I might just say, hey, wire in your switch because it's not rocket science and how to do it. If you buy a switch from an RC shop like Joe or, you know, your local, I'll just do it the other way, your local hobby shop or whatever, the switch already has this on it. But I have to solder mine up because mine are not made for this. Okay. The next thing we do, hang on. This is another hard lesson learned. Okay. What I do now, this might seem odd, I take a piece of electrical tape. See these wires? All of them. And the antenna. I tape them going in the direction of the antenna. See that? Okay. I push them down. You don't want to stretch them out and fuck anything up. Put this over. Pull it tight. Then Try to cut it where your greasy ass hands haven't touched it. 8,000 razor knives and I still use bare razors. Okay, that's it. Now the reason I do that first is because I have had it where a channel can pop up or get discombobulated and you could lose your steering, which that's not the end of the world. Just stop your boat and go get it. Lose your throttle could be a bad day at the zoo. So, the next thing I do, pay close attention to this. I buy some balloons. I have 300 balloons. I have two little girls and a lot of RC boats. I go through a lot of balloons. So, what I do with some my balloon, all right, I take a razor blade. I cut the neck, not all the way down. You don't want some big ass hole like a bad date in Virginia. You want, cut it right here, just like that, okay? Now, these are all nice and neat for you. This is how you waterproof your receiver, and it works insanely well. Take your rubber band, or your, your balloon, do that. Now what we do is we take two. That's where these come in. Take two little zip strips. Now what I do, take it by the collar here, and wrap it around. Nice and tight. Tight is the key, okay? Then we put this in, like that, and I don't let go yet. You don't have to use these zip strip pliers, but I do, because it gets them stupid tight, and to the point where you'll probably break it. Then I'm going to take another one. I have not let go of that little collar yet. Offset it a little bit. I'm making a trap. Okay. Done is done is done. That thing is waterproof. It'll actually hold air. Um, I have had my radio boxes completely underwater for minutes. One time was 20 minutes, I think. No, it was actually underwater. I destroyed it. I hit the ski jump with it. That's right. And uh, this was still dry as a bone. You can do it two balloons if you want to, but I don't go quite that far. Don't spray your receiver with conformal coat because people are probably asking that. They're like, why don't you... Why don't you just conformal coat it? You can. You can take the board out of your receiver, which is usually a pain in the ass, and you can take it out. Then, But then you have to cover your connectors 
before you spray it, because if you spray conformal coat over those connectors, <laughs> you will never get a servo connection. That'd be bad. Okay, so I'm just going to pull these through a little bit. Next thing we're going to do, we have to pull, the antenna does not go through there, but the battery wires do. It still doesn't fit with the dam, so let's go. There we go. Okay. Actually, I could have left that on, but that's okay. This is just for pretend right now. So we're going to jam all this shit in there. Just like an RC car. Pretty much where I got the idea. Um, and then, my little lid. I stick my antenna through this little lid. Now, this little radio box is not watertight. It can be. You can take some silicone, put it around this edge, clamp this down, silicone that, silicone down there, and it is technically waterproof, but it's a real pain in the ass to get your receiver out. So actually what I do is I put a tiny bit of CA glue right there. I shoot it with just a dot there and there and then that just holds the lid down we've got it we've got this in a balloon i'm not worried about it this is just to keep the wires and the receiver from flopping around okay so then the next thing we're going to do this obviously fits now believe it or not that's it that's done as far as uh guts and components nice and clean very very clean then we put our little fancy schmancy lid on there now the next thing we would do I actually found one of these in the magic drawer. This is an antenna tube. <laughs> I don't know why I even have it because I don't buy these. It must have come on an old boat I bought back in the day. I don't know. Usually what I'll do is I'll take a piece of water tubing, water cooling line. Let's see, do I have any? Something like that. And I will stuff this through that hole or make it a little bit bigger. And then I'll just run my tube through there and stick a, a bolt, like a hex head in there. Done. But I actually have one of these stupid things, which is kind of a, a waste of time because all this does, I put a tube over this, but we got it. We'll use it. Let's see if this works. Done. And if you want to, you can put a little CA glue around there to, where to go, just to kind of seal it up. Make it a little bit more watertight. Now, the stupid thing is with these things, now most people would take a straw, like an antenna straw, like an RC car, and stick it in there. I, don't, I still don't do that. I still take a freaking piece of tube. <laughs> I do that, and I still, I either put heat shrink tubing over this or stick a bolt in there and bada bing, it done. Bam, done. Um, so that's that. And so now this all fits nice and tight. Nothing fit, or nothing blows through. Servo arms don't hit the lid. Done. So, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I put these in the boat, but and then we're going to call it quits on this video, and then we'll do the linkage and all that stuff in the next video. So, give me two seconds, I'll pop the boat on. Now, check it out. I'm going to show you all a magic trick. <clears throat> this is how I put in radio boxes, and you're going to be like, really? So, first thing I do, uh, my 3D prints are exceptionally smooth on the bottom. Take some 80 grit, I rough it up. Now this goes for pretty much any radio box, unless you made one out of wood. Hey, that's something we can do. I'll do a supplemental video, because I forgot we got the wood radio box for this thing. I forgot about that. Thanks for reminding me. All right, make sure this is clean. You don't really have to rough this part up. <clears throat> now, just for good measure, these rails are five inches apart. Your box should be give or take five inches. I'm going to slide my rod through here. That's going to come off. I'm going to put the other piece on there. But we're not putting it on the rudder yet. And then our little throttle cable is going to go to here. Now, we're going to take off our little baby saver. I should use condoms for this. It'd be funny as hell. All right. I'm going to see if this old one matches up, but it should. Oh, yeah. No problem at all. Now, I like mine, my radio boxes. I did modify this tub or the boat a little bit. That's where I have to modify crackers for my radio box because my throttle cable comes out pretty low. The other thing I do with the throttle cable, this rust that you get, I take a piece of water line. I take this off and I put the water line over I cut it to length and I put it over the cable, but I grease the cable first. 
and that keeps it nice, keeps it from getting rusty and rust dust all over your boat. It's just a quick trick. Adds a three seconds of weight, but it's not a big deal. So what I'm going to do, because I don't want to go through the hassle of recutting this cable. So what we're going to do, if I can find my Allen, where in the name of St. Christopher's Prick did I put it? There it is. Okay, so take this set, and I'm just going to hook it right up to the throttle, even though I'm not setting anything yet. And you can see my 440 rod is plenty back. Something to take into consideration is your center of gravity. Now, I've noticed on crackers, I've had the radio box all the way to the back, and I've had it all the way to here, the bulkhead, and it made absolutely zero difference for me. But my stuff's pretty light. I don't use really heavy batteries. I don't use fifth scale servos, and I use extremely small radio boxes compared to most people. My radio box probably weighs a third, if not more less, than most radio boxes for this configuration. Now you notice when I designed it, I did not make it a full five inches. There's a reason for that. I don't want a super tight fit, especially in a wood boat, because if for some reason you get a little warpage in the rail or whatever, your box might not fit. So I gave it a little bit of, I wanted to cut down on weight primarily. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, I put it in, I got plenty of room on my rod. <laughs> and, um, we've got this hooked up reasonably well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the radio box to one side, I'm gonna mark my rails like that, just so I know where it goes. No big deal. You can use a Sharpie. If you ever need to get Sharpie marker off, believe it or not, the, one of the best things to get Sharpie off of something is a CA glue activator. You know the shit I spray on super glue to make it freeze up fast? It takes just spray that on the Sharpie marker bit and wipe it right off. It's amazing. Works really good. Denatured alcohol works a little bit too. All right, so we're going to take this back off. When you're not having these set up, put these screws back in because losing them is a bad day. All right. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to take this back out. And I'm going to show you my magic trick for putting in a radio box. You're going to crack up. You want to see what I use? Get the clear if you can. I ended up with a box of white, like 10 tubes of this shit, so I'm trying to use it up. And what I do is I just put some schmutz down here, trying to make it too messy, and then I just press the box in. The reason I like this is it's perfectly strong enough to hold it in turns, and for everything else, it works really well. It actually acts like a shock absorber too. So if you do hit something with your rubber, it does have a little bit of give, but not as much as you'd think, and it's not like not like fucking jello, you know. Um, but the nice thing, the reason I like this, this gorilla one, is because it cure, it sets in 30 minutes. It cures in it probably overnight, but it, it, you can actually keep working on your boat after half an hour. And if you need to get your radio box out, all you have to do is stick a, a putty knife under there or really, you know, monkey grip it and pull it out and it won't break the wood. If so I got that going for me. If you epoxy these things in, it'll break the wood or the radio box. If you bolt them in, that's more holes you have to worry about in your hull. Use this stuff. Works really good. So there's a mark. There's a mark. So I'm going to do just a little bit on the outside. If I see a little bit, I don't care because you actually remember, guys, you have a hatch cover over this. So you want to make it somewhat nice, though. And then I'm going to put a thick bit here. Now, the reason I'm making it kind of thick like this is because I want a, 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 a cushion or like a, an Oreo cookie in there, right? So what we're going to do now, try not to get your shit all gooey. Wrong way. As I say that, I'll probably do a little Rascal's Jelly Sandwich here and just fuck it all up. And I set it down reasonably close to where I had it. Okay. I'm going to hook this back up because it's going to be really shitty. Oh, somebody stepping a duck. <laughs> if this radio box is too far back. <laughs> but you have to remember, I'm replicating the old Nintendo boat. I'm using the same parts over, the same center of gravity, pretty much. Now, it is in the manual 
that Joe supplies, Zip Kit supplies with this boat, it's in the manual where your center of gravity should be. 90% of the time with most boats, a good starting place is 30% up from the transom. So you go from the very back of the boat. So if your boat's 300 inches, I know that's stupid. Okay, you're going to be 30, or you, you're going to go 30% up. Does that make sense? Okay, so you should be able to pivot the boat when it's fully loaded, gas bag, whole nine. I, I use the gas bag in that equation, uh, but whatever. So the next thing I do is I take a weight and I set this weight on top. You do not need to clamp this. Try to make it reasonably straight. I mean, you don't want this thing looking like redneck willy or anything. <clears throat> I do have a little bit creeping out the back here. You can't see. I really don't care. <laughs> I, honestly. And that's about it. See that? And you could take your finger and make it a little, you know, soak it in cider. Heals everything. <laughs> All right. There you go, kids. That's pretty nice. Now, I guarantee you, tomorrow when we come back, I'm going to let it sit overnight because I'm done doing videos. When we come back, you'll be able to pick this sucker up by that radio box, and it won't even move. This shit works great for radio boxes. Another thing that I've done before, it's a little messier, it's a little harder to gauge, is, uh, you know, that pour foam that we've stuck in the nose of this beast? I'll mix up a small batch of pour foam. And I'll literally pour it in that area, put it on there, put a weight on there, give it 10 minutes, that radio box is in. But the problem is it does tend to ooze. If you put in too much, it can kind of come out, and then it's a, it looks like shit. I really like, I've done it before, and it comes out pretty good, but you really have to chisel the shit out of it. I really like the silicone idea. Get clear if you can. That way, if you do schmutz it all up, it doesn't look like a bag of ass. But you know what I'm saying. Clear works really good for this. Um, I think I'm out of that other one, so hopefully I'll just buy, go out and buy some clear. So that is it, believe it or not. Now we still have to set everything up. I have to wire every. I have to wire my switch in and all that crap. Uh, also, make sure you got room for your switch. Uh, but other than that, then we'll put the cooling lines on tomorrow. We'll finish out the radio box, and uh, probably won't fire it up just because I don't want to get oil all over the raw wood because we still need to seal this, paint it, all that stuff. So anyway, until tomorrow, kids, keep dry side up, have fun. Yeah, 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 yeah.